Good evening. Today we are going to study, as we last uh, Wednesday we studied on dealing with the Jehovah's Witnesses. We are going to continue with that study today, dealing with the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, maybe part two. Basically what I'm going to pr teach today or see from the, or what we will study from the Bible today will be the Jehovah's Witnesses versus the Holy Spirit. Now what is the Holy Spirit according to the Jehovah's Witnesses and what is the Holy Spirit according to the Bible? And it is very important for us to know these truths if we come across people who are antichrist, who are against the truth who are against God's word and who bring down the Holy Spirit and make him a mere force. The, the, the electricity that you see today is by the force, okay? Or, or, you know, there are certain things what we call, like if I do this, it's by the force, but this paper has no feelings at all. It has no emotions, it has no feeling, it, it does not pain, it is not grief, nothing happens. Because it is just a piece of paper which is shaken by the force of my hand. Okay, tossed, uh, tossed and beaten by the wind. And so what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach today, or from the beginning, is that the Holy Spirit is not God but is just a force from God. Okay, now that is absolutely against the scripture. Now if you are a Jehovah's Witness listening to me online, I would encourage you to just listen to me before you comment or say something wrong. If you would just listen to all what, I, what has been said and quoted from the scripture, I do believe the Spirit of God would convict you. Okay, so we're going to study today on the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is a person. But the Jehovah's Witness, they will teach you that the Holy Spirit is just a force or the Holy Spirit is a force. Okay, but we are not going to deal on the Jehovah's Witness what they believe. We're going to see what the Bible teaches so we are able to arm ourselves by the truth. In the book of Galatians, in chapter 1, I believe, God is warning us uh, and, and telling us how to deal with these cards. I will read for you in the book of Galatians, chapter uh, 1. Verse number 6, the Bible tells us, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, so you got to be very careful when people say, I saw a vision of an angel, I saw a vision of Christ, and he came and told me this, and he came and told me that. It doesn't matter what the Bible says, because the angel told me, you got to be very careful when people say such thing. Can an angel come and say such thing? Absolutely yes. An angel can come and teach you false doctrines. The Bible tells us in First Cor Second Corinthians, uh, marvel not for uh, for uh, it, it says Satan him, uh, transforms himself as an angel of light. He transforms himself as an angel of light, and and what he does, he deceives the people. He makes people uh, believe in a lie. So yes, Satan transforms himself as an angel and, uh, and, and evil spirits can come and deceive or Satan takes the form of all this, uh, 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 takes the form of different people and come and deceive you. That's what today people are deluded and they say, I saw an angel. The, the Mormons were started when, they, when Joseph Smith claimed that an angel Maroni came and gave him a golden tablet. And go, uh, gave him some commandments, and and uh, and this Mormon religion started. 
And then we have the Jehovah's Witnesses having their own doctrines. We have the Seventh-day Adventists having their own doctrines. We have Christian Science having their own doctrines. We have different cults today all over the world spread it. Well, Satan is happy by... Remember one thing, there is not many divisions. There is only two divisions in the world. People say, oh, the church is divided and all these things has happened and there's so many denominations. No, that's not true. The truth is there is, there is just two divisions. One is of God and the other is of the devil, of Satan. What he does is he has many branches. He has so many denominations. He has so many religions. What he does is he spreads so that this group of people from your people may be deceived and they will join. And what he does is by using, he's just trying to work hard to destroy the people who are in the group of God. There's only two divisions. One is of the devil and one is of God. And God is for division. Remember that. People today say, well, God is not for division. God doesn't divide. God does divide. You know what Jesus said? Don't think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I've come to bring division. Okay? I've come to bring division. Okay? He, he divides people. He calls out a group of people from the world. He divides. He even tells in the Bible that if, if, if any brother, if, if there is any brother who does not um, uh, walk according to the teaching of this word, what do you do? Withdraw yourself. Come out. God teaches division. Okay? Why He teaches division? Because He is in the business of having a group of people of purity and holiness. Amen? Amen. He is... He's not interested, you know, like the, um, when I was in school, one of my teacher gave this illustration and said, there was a guru or there was a teacher who gave 10 rupees to two disciples, okay, of his two disciples. And he gave 10 rupees each and he said, take this 10 rupees and go to the market and buy whatever you can and fill the room with all that you can buy in 10 rupees. And so this disciple went, one disciple went, he went to the market and uh, he took this 10 rupees. They had their own uh, rooms. He took the 10 rupees and uh, he was looking out and says, everything is just costly and with this 10 rupees I can get nothing. And then he saw a bunch of garbage over there. And he remembered my guru or my teacher said that I have to fill my house. So I'm going to take this 10 rupees and buy all this garbage and fill my house. And so with 10 rupees, what he did? He filled his house with garbage. Here is another disciple. He went to the market and he looked around and he saw everything is costly. But he knew that he has to fill this house uh, as the teacher said, as the guru said. So what he did was he bought a candle and he bought an incense. He bought some incense with those 10 rupees. He brought that and he lighted the candle in his house. The house was filled with brightness. And he brought that incense. And he put that incense. And the house was filled with fragrance. Amen? Amen. What are you trying to fill today? God is not in the business of filling his house with garbage. He is in the business of filling his kingdom with people who are called out. Chosen. Peculiar people. Amen. Amen. Saved by the grace of God. Washed by the blood of Christ. Sealed by the Holy Ghost. God is in the business of filling his kingdom with saved or redeemed people. Yes, God divides. He calls out people from this garbage. And he cleanses us by the precious blood. And he keeps us pure. He seals us with his Holy Spirit. Amen. So, just because there is a big crowd does not mean God is there. Okay? And so what we see here is God is in the work of division. He divides people. He separates. He separates from the sheep and the goat. He separates from the evil and good. He separates everything. He separates. Okay? And, and so there is oh, just two divisions. One is of the devil. And all these things what you see in this world is of the devil. And there is only one thing of God 
Whosoever believeth in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe His word <coughs> and believe in the shed blood, death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, the God who created heaven and earth and God who created everything. Amen. All those who reject the truth of the King James Bible, all those who reject the truth of the Bible belongs to the devil. There is no many divisions. There is just two divisions. One is of God, another is of the devil. Okay, so why I was saying is because today Satan, uh, Satan is trying to teach uh, to the people, Oh, God is not uh, about division. We should not divide people. The truth is God is about division. Okay, God is of division. He divides everything because of purity. He wants sanctification. He wants holiness. He wants people chosen out of the world, called out ones. That's what church means. Called out from the world. This Sunday, me and my wife, we were able to go and talk to a doctor. We were witnessing to him and sharing the gospel. Man, I tell you, this man was right to the point. Everything that I asked him, he gave me the right answer. Absolutely right answer. He gave the right answer even about gospel. He was a Catholic. He told me exactly. He told me exactly what I wanted to hear. But I knew one thing for sure. There is nothing so called secret Catholic saved. Uh, there is nothing called. There is a Catholics who are saved and they are still in the Catholic church. I do not believe. Many of the preachers believe that. I do not believe. And I had a doubt there. Satan is very clever today by teaching the doctrines in such a way. It's like you having a, you know, this is our teeth, right? This is our teeth. It's like the teeth could be good, but that could be cavity inside, right? Huh? But, we, but our, from outside, everything may look good, okay? And so, I had this thing going on back of my mind. Man, there's something wrong over here. This man is giving me the exact answer. And then I went to the final authority. Then I tried to hit him hard on the Bible. Then finally I asked him, Do you go to the Catholic Church every Sunday and receive the Holy Communion? And then I asked him, Do you believe that the Holy Communion that you receive, that wafer, do you believe that wafer is Jesus Christ? And he said, Yes. Now that's the devil. He gave the right answer for everything. He believed in shed blood, death, burial and resurrection to go to heaven. He gave just clear cut answer. But you know what? His Jesus was that cookie Jesus in the wafer that the priest prays and turns it as Jesus Christ. That is his Jesus. You see how Satan is today trying to change people, trying to change the teaching and he gives you some kind of truth and then that's what last Wednesday I said. He comes out with 99% truth and with one percentage of lie, He destroys you. Amen? Amen? That's the truth. Okay? And this man, he believed that cookie, that wafer is Jesus Christ. For him, that is Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, that is not Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So now it comes, which Jesus do you believe in? Because there are many Jesus today. Do you believe the Jesus of the Bible or do you believe in the Jesus of the religion? Because religion teaches many Jesus today. Well, now we are going into the, uh, the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses versus the Holy Spirit. The Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the Holy Spirit is not God. Remember that. Now, they might say, yeah, we believe in the Holy Spirit is God. And then they will use this G. O D, the small G. Remember that. You know, they, they, they will uh, speak in such a way, they will manipulate your mind, they will try to do all that they can do to just first get your attention. You ask any Jehovah's Witnesses for the first time, do you believe Jesus Christ is God? And they will say, yes. They will say, yes, because their Jesus is small G. But our Jesus is capital G-O-D. The New World Translation uses, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was small g-o-d. Because that is Jesus for them. So, in order to get your attention, that's what they are going to say, Yes, we believe Jesus is God. 
You ask them, do you believe Jesus rose again? Yes, we believe Jesus rose again. But how? Jesus rose spiritually, not bodily for them. But in the scripture, Jesus rose physically with body. Amen? And so, um, they, will, they, they do not believe that the Holy Spirit is God. But what we are going to see what the Bible teaches. They do not believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. They believe that the Holy Spirit is a force. It's something, there's a force that's coming from God. It's like the atheists. The atheists, that there are some kind of atheists, though they do not believe at all in some kind of power or God. But there are a particular group of atheists that they believe in some supernatural power. They do believe. There are a certain group of atheists who believe in some supernatural uh, powerful force. Okay? Now that is exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses are. Now, the, absolutely, when you see in the scripture, you're going to see how the innocent, ignorant Jehovah's Witnesses are deceived. And if they would just pay attention to this teaching today, the Spirit of God would convict them and bring them to the truth. Turn your Bible with me to 2 Samuel chapter 23. Now, I'm not going to go deeper. I was just looking into my notes of which I preached last year and I had several verses about the Holy Spirit as a person. But then today I'm not using that. This is a fresh message, a fresh teaching and uh, nothing to do with the last year's teaching. It's absolutely fresh. And um, uh, I just want to give you a little where you can remember and use it to defend the truth than to give you so much and you forget everything by the time you leave this room. So I'm just going to give you a couple of points with few scriptures. And if you stick to this truth, oh, you can just defend the truth and you can know the truth. 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And verse number 2. Can a force speak, by the way? Can a force speak? No. A force cannot speak. An electricity power is a force. Can it speak? No. This, this air that I get cannot speak to me. It is a force that blows on me. But see what the Bible tells about the Holy Spirit. In 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse number 2, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. Amen. Who is speaking here? The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks to you and to me even today through the Scripture. It's not a force. But the Bible says He speaks. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me and His word was in my tongue. So the Spirit, you can, if you're taking notes, you can say, The Spirit of the Lord speaks. And then you put that verse, Second Samuel chapter 23, it, verse number 2. Secondly, we are going to jump immediately to the second verse in the Old Testament and then we will get into the New Testament immediately. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Job, just before Psalms. Book of Job, chapter number 33. Book of Job, chapter number 33. And we will see here what the Holy Spirit does. He not only speaks, you know who speaks? A person speaks, amen? A person speaks, and the Holy Spirit is a person. Anybody who says that the Holy Spirit is a force is a blaspheming against the Holy Spirit because he is taking, he is teaching the false truth and he is saying the Holy Ghost is not God, he is not a person, he is just a force. It's a blasphemy. And that's an abomination. Amen? In Job chapter 33, verse number 4, the Bible says, the Spirit of God, the capital S, is speaking about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God had what He did? Made me. Amen? Amen. 
the Holy Spirit made you and me. He regenerates us. Amen. He quickens us. He gives us life. You know when we read the book of Genesis. In the creating work of Adam. When God created. Who is, who is there with God? God says let us make men in our image. Amen. And then what happens? We, we see the Holy Ghost right from the beginning, even in verse number... Come, come with me to Genesis. Put your finger there in Job chapter 33. And see in Genesis chapter 1, see um, the Holy Spirit is right there in verse number 2, doing the work of salvation. I, I actually preached a message on this, how the Holy Spirit works and does the work uh, uh, in, in our salvation in, from verse number 2. And the earth was without form. And void. That's the condition of your heart. That's the condition of your soul. That's the condition of your spirit. You are void. You are empty. You are dark. You are filled with darkness without Christ. And the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. Amen. You are in darkness. You are empty. You are void. But when you hear the word of God. What the Holy Ghost does. He moves among you. Amen. He convicts you. He tells you how wicked you are. How sinful you are. And that you need Jesus Christ to believe. You need to believe in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in His death and resurrection. And so we see He is moving there. Right in verse number 2 of chapter number 1. Then we see how God when He created man... Uh, where is that? God creating Adam. He is breathing in his nostril. In Genesis chapter 2. Verse number 7. No, 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 no. Well, actually I wanted to give you that verse number 2 itself. But anyway, verse number 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and, the, and, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. That's it. Okay? The breath of life. That's the Spirit of God. When God breathed into you, He breathed His Spirit into you, and man became a living soul. Unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit... You cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And what is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay. So here what happens? God breathed. God is breathing his spirit. And what happens? Uh, and man became a living soul. The life. The spirit. Okay. So we see even in, in verse number 2 of chapter number 1 of Genesis. He is moving there. He is already in action. He is there from the beginning. And then in chapter number 2, verse number 7, we see He is the one who gives life. Amen? Amen. When God blows His Spirit, His air, into, the, into a man, into Adam, He becomes a living soul. That's what happens when God blows on you. You are born again. Amen? Amen. That's what we read about in the book of Ezekiel, where is it? Uh, in the book of Ezekiel, when this, when, when those dead bodies, the bones were there, what happened? When the spirit of God was blown on them, what happened? The bones began to rise up. They had life within them. Okay, Job chapter thirty-three, verse number four, says speaks about the spirit of God creates. He is in the creating work. It's not a force. He's a person who is creating something. Amen. And Job is saying, uh, The Spirit of God hath made me. You know, by the way, book of Job is the first book that was written even before Genesis. Amen. Even before Genesis, the book of Job was the first book that was written. And so we find the Spirit of God creates 
Then we will see in John. Come jump into the New Testament. John chapter 4. Gospel of John chapter 4. In the Gospel of John chapter 4, verse number 24, there is something that you find. You know what the Jehovah's Witness believe? They believe that God is a person, but the Holy Spirit is a... Is what? Is a force. God is a person, but the Holy Spirit is a... Per, I mean, <laughs> sorry. God is a person, and the Holy Spirit is a... Force. But we are going to see here what God is teaching us. See in Gospel of John chapter 4 verse number 24. The Bible says God is a spirit. Which means according to the Jehovah's Witness, even God should be a force. Because God is a spirit. But no, God is not a force. God is a person. Even though he is a spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship whom? Worship the force or the person? The person God. Okay. God is a spirit. That's the capital S. Yes. That's true. And they that worship him. Must worship Him in spirit <laughs> and in truth. Amen? Amen? So, God is a person, not a force. Even though He is a spirit. And the Jehovah's Witness believe that God is a person, but the Holy Spirit is a force, because Holy Spirit is spirit. But the Bible teaches us that God is a spirit. Amen? Amen. And if God is a spirit, and if you believe that the spirit of that God is a spirit, being a spirit is a person, then the Holy Spirit Himself is a person. Amen? Are you getting it? Or getting confused? Okay, good. You're getting it. So God is a spirit, not a force, yet He is a person. That's what you must write. God is a spirit, not a force, yet He is a person. Then we will see in John chapter 14, verse number 7. John chapter 14, verse number 7. If the Jehovah's Witness would just stop reading that little booklet that they have, how to know your Bible, or how to understand that Bible, and if they would just read the Bible and take the King James Bible and read, the Holy Ghost will lighten up and lighten them and teach them the truth. But you know what? The Jehovah's Witness do not study their Bible more. Oh, even if they can, they might confess and say, we study the Bible. But mostly what they read and study is their booklets and the books that's written. How to understand the Bible. The Awake magazine. The Watchtower Society magazine. That's what they are told to read and study more. Because they are told that they cannot understand the Bible by themselves. So their elders need to interpret the Bible. You know what the Bible says? God is the interpreter of the scripture. Amen. Amen. You and I have no business in an interpreting the scripture. The very moment you begin to interpret the Bible, you will become a false, you will get into a false teaching. It is not your business of interpreting the Bible. Yours and my business today is to believe what the Bible says, even when you don't understand it. Amen? Amen? Because there are many things that you and I will not understand. But that doesn't mean you put a doubt into it. But it means that you need to believe by faith. The just shall live by faith. Okay? The just does not live by interpretation, but the just shall live by faith. And you know what? When your desire is true and you want to study and you study and you read and read and read and when you were certain things that you don't understand today and a couple of years later or a couple of months later when you're reading again, God opens up your eyes and your heart and He says, you're the truth. And there you get the truth. That means I've been studying this Bible for the last 13 years and, and, and there were several things that I have had no idea about it. 
And then about this year, and the last year, God started opening up my mind and teaching me, which I thought it's so difficult to understand. We don't have to break our head in trying to understand. We have to believe what the Bible says is true and accept it. And God, the faithful God, will reveal the truth to you and to me in His time. Amen? Amen. That is the truth. Okay? So in John chapter 14, verse number 7, the Bible tells us that if he had known me, Jesus is speaking here. Okay? If you had known me, you should have known my father. And then what? My Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, I will read anyway. You should have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Wow! Jesus is saying, if you have known me... No, you know, I read the wrong verse actually. It's supposed to be John chapter 14, verse number 17. But God gave this verse. Because that's the truth. Look at that verse again. Thank you, Lord. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. Okay? And from henceforth... He know him and have seen him. What is Jesus talking about? In verse number 8, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Verse number 9, And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is God. You can say amen, amen to that. Yeah. Jesus Christ is God. And how sayest thou then show us the Father? That's beautiful. Amen? And now come to verse number 17. In verse number 17, the Bible, Jesus is speaking here and say, Even the capital S, the Holy Spirit, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. What? What is Jesus talking about? Is He talking about a person there? Or is He talking about a force there? It's talking about a person using personal pronoun. Him. He. And by the way, the Holy Spirit is not she. The Holy Spirit is He. Amen. Amen. There is a woman in South Korea. They worship her as the Holy Spirit. Uh, her name is Zig Zag Lug something, and they don't, <laughs> and they don't, <laughs> they don't talk, uh, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. They have to talk, uh, pray in the name of Zig Zag Lug something that lady's name is. Okay, and they call them as Christian, and they worship on Saturday, and they are in Goa, and I had a debate with them here, right here. Okay, and you know what happened? They called me up and said, Pastor, we want to come and meet you and we want to tell you the truth. The Holy Ghost has revealed such a truth to us and we are going to show you from the Bible. And I said, okay, come. And it was, were you there that evening? No, you were not there. Okay. There were about five, five people from the church. They were there in the evening. And uh, Sorry? Jeffrey. Oh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey was there. My brother was there and Patrick's family was there. And we were sitting and talking and they came and we began to talk. And um, and um, before he came, man, he was on fire. He just thought he is going to tell everything and dump on me and convert me and take all the church and make us as zigzaglur followers. <laughs> okay? And then he came and, and we began to talk and began to talk and talk and said the scripture. You know, in 15 minutes he started getting up and walking out and his wife was sitting and listening to me. And I was able to share the gospel to his wife. He had no patience. He was all the time walking out with his phone. That's what the cults do. The moment you corner them with the truth, they will not stay with you and listen to you. They want to go. But praise the Lord, his wife uh, was, he, he was listening to me. And um, I don't know what happened to them. But yeah, verse number 17. 
Then said some of his disciples among themselves. Oh, what am I reading? John chapter 14. Sorry? Verse number 17. The page, page turns, sorry. Okay, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. You see, it doesn't matter what the Jehovah's Witness tells me or tells you. What matters for you and for me is what says the Bible. What says the scripture, what Jesus said. And Jesus said, he is saying what? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see uh, receive. Because it seeth him. The whole Jesus is calling him as a person by using personal pronoun for the Holy Ghost. For he, okay, the Holy Spirit is not some lady, is some woman in South Korea. He is God. He is a masculine gender. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. Amen. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth him, seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall also live. And at that day ye shall know that I am in my Father and he in me and I in you. He that is at my commandments and keep them. He it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to you. Man, if you reject Jesus Christ as God, you do not love the father in heaven. There is no salvation. Oh, I believe in Jesus Christ that he shed his blood on the cross. I believe Jesus died on, on the tree. I believe he rose again. I believe in his shed blood, in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection. I believe in Jesus Christ. But I do not believe that he is God. You are down to hell. You are not saved. Amen. The Jehovah's believe in the shed blood, in the death, in the burial, and in the resurrection. Ask any Jehovah's Witness. They believe in all this truth. But they do not believe that he resurrected bodily. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 that they are Antichrist. Just because someone says, I believe in shed blood, death, burial and resurrection does not mean he is saved. You got to know what he is. Jesus is actually is. Is his Jesus of the Bible or his Jesus is of the religion? Yes, they believe. The, ask any Roman Catholics. Do they believe in virgin birth? Absolutely yes. Do they believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ? Absolutely yes. Do, do, do they believe in his death? Amen. Yes. Do they believe in his uh, burial? Absolutely. Do they believe in his bodily resurrection? Absolutely. This is absolutely sufficient for a person to be saved. But their Jesus is just a cookie inside a blessed sacrament. Locked him there for once in a week. That's their Jesus. And that is not the Jesus of the Bible. So don't tell me that there are Catholics who are saved and secret Catholics. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as secret Catholics saved. Or saved secret Catholics. There is not, no, no, no such thing. There is no Jehovah Witness who are saved. There is nobody who is saved. If you, ought to, if you want to be saved, then you know what you do? You repent, you come with a repentant heart, you come to Jesus Christ by faith, believe in His shed blood, death and burial um, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, believe that He is the only true God and there is no other God beside Him. Amen? Amen. Because you don't believe in Jesus Christ as God, then you are not saved, even if you believe in all this truth. It doesn't matter whether you believe in this and this. And it doesn't matter whether you believe in shed blood, death, burial and resurrection. You are still going to hell if you don't believe Jesus is God. That's a deep thing, right? A lot of people will just tell you, man, just, uh, just say a prayer. Uh, just believe in Jesus. Believe in his shed blood. Believe that he died. Believe he rose again. Believe, uh, believe he's coming again. Just say a prayer now. And you are saved. No, you are not saved if you do not understand the truth of Jesus Christ. 
You must understand who Jesus is in order to be saved. You must believe that Jesus Christ is God. He is the only true God. You don't believe in Jesus Christ as God, you are down on the way to eternal lake of fire. Okay, and so even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, um, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Well, so that if you, if you took point, that was Jesus calls the spirit as a person, using personal pronoun. Next, the Holy Spirit comforts you. The Holy Spirit comforts you. See in chapter 15, I'm going to run fast, okay, because, because of the time, and you got to follow me. John chapter 15, verse number 26. Jesus is speaking here. Can a force be a comforter? No. A pillow can be comfort for you, but the pillow can, cannot be a comforter. You may, see com you may feel comfort on your couch, but the couch is not a comforter. A comforter is a person. Amen. And so Jesus is telling about a comforter here. And a comforter is a person in verse number 26 of John chapter 15. The Bible says, but when the comforter is come, is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father. The next word, He. Okay? Personal pronoun. Masculine gender. He shall testify of me. And he shall also bear witness because he have been with me for, from the beginning. You know who are true, Jeho true uh, you know uh, who, who are true Jehovah's Witnesses? The true Jehovah's Witnesses are the one who believe that the Holy Spirit is God and that Jesus Christ is God and God the Father is God. The true Jehovah's Witnesses are the ones who believe in one God in three persons. Right there, he says, if you believe, you will be my you will bear witness. You know, I was in uh, Benjamin Burston one day distributing a gospel track and I came across and I gave a track to a woman. And she was a Jehovah's Witness. She looked at me and says, No, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I don't need your leaflet. I said, Ma'am, I'm also a Jehovah's Witness. That's what I said. Then she says, Are you? I said, Yes, absolutely. But the only difference is I'm a true Jehovah's Witness and you are a false Jehovah's Witness. I believe in Jesus Christ who is the Jehovah. Amen? Amen. You do not believe in the Jehovah of the Bible. You believe in a Jesus, in a Jehovah that was painted and pictured by your founder who is Charles Stage of Fire. But the true Jehovah is in the Bible and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a true Jehovah's witness and I bear witness of the true Jehovah and His name is Jesus Christ today. Amen? Amen. And so we find it, but when the company is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Okay? So he is a person and he comforts you. A force does not comfort you. Only a person can comfort you with words and with touch. Can comfort you. It is the Holy Spirit who, who is the comforter. Then, the Holy Spirit hears, speaks, guides, and shows the future. The Holy Spirit hears, speaks, guides, and shows the future. A force is not able to do any of such things. Can a force hear? No. Can a force speak? No. Can he guide? No. Can he show you the future? No way. But the Holy Spirit does this because He is God and He is a person. That's why He can speak, hear and guide and show. John chapter 16, verse number 13. John chapter 16, verse number 13. How about when He, speaking about whom? 
the Holy Spirit. Who is speaking here? Jesus Christ. How about when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come? What He will do? He will guide you. Did you ever see a rod standing in Mandavi Bridge and waving at some taxis and saying, Guide, guide, guide. Have you ever seen? No. You have seen people standing there, right? And waving at the tourists and saying, You need guide? I'm a guide. Only a person can guide. Amen? Amen. How about when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He... That's the Holy Spirit. Shall not speak. Okay. When was the last time your pen started speaking? No. When was the last time the wind started speaking to the, the air of the fan started speaking? No. When was the last time the electricity power started speaking? When you got a shock, you started yelling. Not the power. Amen. How about when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself. He, Himself, speak. Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is a person. It doesn't matter what the Jehovah's Witness tells us. Amen? Amen. What matters is what saith the Scripture. But whatsoever, so it says, For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. Let me ask this glass to move. Can this glass hear? No. It cannot hear. This paper, I can blow, but the paper cannot hear. The fan cannot hear me. It's just a force. The, the power that comes is a force, but they cannot hear me. But the Holy Spirit hears. He speaks. He guides. Wow. Just in one verse, all the truth, the beauty of the Holy Spirit. Amen? But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And He will show you things to come. Amen. You know why the Jehovah's Witnesses do not know the future? Because they do not believe in the Holy Spirit as a person. And so the Holy Spirit cannot show them the future. And the Holy Spirit cannot show them the truth. The Holy Spirit cannot guide them. Because they do not believe in Him. As long as they... Show a blind eye to the truth of the Holy Spirit. They will be blind. And they will lead into, go into the ditch. And they will lead all into the ditch. Finally into the lake of fire. Even if they don't believe in hell. They still. You know what? In hell everyone is a Bible believing person. In hell. All will be a Bible believing resident. Because in hell they will definitely believe in the King James Bible and say, Well, that preacher is to preach and tell us. And we do not believe. But now we believe. In hell everybody will be a believer. That's when the Jehovah's Witness will know how hot the fire in hell is. Now they do not believe in hell. They say, Oh, it's not hell. It's just a grave. It's just a grave. They will know very soon. So the Holy Spirit hears, speaks, guides and shows the truth. So the Bible is totally against the Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they are absolutely wrong. They are Antichrist. They are of the devil. And they are on the way to eternal lake of fire. Now that's the truth. Um, that's, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be, uh, I'm not trying to be very arrogant. I'm trying to be loving to tell the truth to such people. And if there are people listening to me online, if you are Jehovah's Witness, this is the truth. And you need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as God, the Holy Spirit as God, and Father as God. One God in three persons. How can that be? That is God. Amen? Amen? God can do anything. Now, let's see in the book of Acts. 
Let's see in the book of Acts. Just three points to go and then we finish. In the book of Acts, chapter number 3, Peter calls the Holy Spirit as God. You want to believe what Peter said or you want to believe what Charles said? Not Charles Faria. <laughs> I'm talking about Charles Stage Raphael, the founder of the Jehovah's Witness. What do you want to believe? You want to believe what the Bible says or what the founder says? The Bible says, Amen? Amen. Book of Acts chapter 5. Peter calls the Holy Spirit as God. In the book of Acts chapter 5, you know what the story is? About Ananias and Sapphira promising God to give and then not giving. Boy, you don't make promises. You make promises, you better fulfill it. Otherwise, you're in trouble. In book of Acts chapter 5, but a certain man, I'm actually going to see in verse number 3 and 4, but I'm reading verse 1 onwards. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the prize. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Man, can you lie to a force? No. You cannot lie to a force. You can only lie to a person. Amen? Amen. You cannot lie to a force. I cannot lie to this fan and say, Hey, hey, I'm going to Mopsa. And then I just stay here. It will, not, it will make no sense to the fan here. Amen? Amen? You cannot lie to a force. Try lying to electricity. Putting your finger into that. Huh? No. So, and says what? But Peter, okay, and, um, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou to whom as Ananias and Sapphira lied now? To the Holy Spirit. Now look at this. Thou has not lied unto man, but unto God. Peter knows the truth. Peter knows that the Holy Spirit is God. Not man, but God is a person. It doesn't matter to me what somebody else says. It doesn't matter to me what a denomination says. It doesn't matter to me how good that person is. What matters is what saith the scripture. Amen? Amen. And the scripture says that the Holy Spirit is God. And it's not small g, but it's capital G. Amen? The capital G. And so Peter calls the Holy Spirit as God. So the Holy Spirit is God. That's an absolute truth. Come with me to book of Acts chapter 8. I'm um, 28. I'm going to show you another beautiful truth here. And see how it destroys the very foundation of the Jehovah's Witnesses. I know if still the people who listen who are Jehovah's Witnesses and they will still not convert to Jesus Christ and believe in what, uh, what is being taught today then I, uh, they are willingly ignorant and they are totally possessed by the devil and, and their eyes and their heart is blinded so they will not pursue the truth. But here the truth is. Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. The Holy Spirit, if He is a force, then how come He has a blood? If He is a force, how come He shed His blood? See in verse number 28. Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. He said, be careful, okay? Be careful. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock over which, over the which, the Holy Ghost had made you overseer. Who is making you overseer? The Holy Spirit. Not a force, a person. Appointing people. 
as apostles or as pastors in different churches, ordaining and appointing. The Holy Spirit is doing the work over here. Not a force, but a person. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Amen. Does a force has blood? No. But the Bible says the Holy Ghost has purchased the church with His own blood. Amen. When you say, how can the Holy Ghost have blood? One God in three person. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. They are one. And yet three person. One God in three person. And so we find here the Holy Ghost purchasing the church with His own blood. Now if the Jehovah's Witness still don't believe... That the Holy Ghost is a person. Then there is no other truth can be revealed unto them. The Holy Ghost will judicially <coughs> harden the heart of this Jehovah's Witness. Like how God did it to the Pharaoh. And they will never believe the truth. And Bible says, you know, God will send you a strong delusion. That you shall believe a lie. Amen. So the Holy Ghost purchased the church with His blood. Finally, and we are going home. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Now, the Bible tells us in three different passages. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Bible says Jesus rose from the dead by himself. And the Bible now here also tells us the Holy Spirit which is one God in three person. Amen. Just as one God in three person was in the work of creating this universe heaven and earth and everything therein which is seen and is not able to be seen. Just as one God in three persons were joined together in the creating work, they are joined together in the work of resurrecting the body of Jesus Christ. Amen? In raising the body of Jesus Christ. In the in book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 11, the Bible says, But if the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, but if the Spirit of Him that, that raised up Jesus... Okay, the Holy Spirit raising, the Holy Spirit raising the very Jesus Christ. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus, Christ, Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, which means make you alive, your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen? Amen. This mortal body will be quickened on the day of rapture. When we will have a glorified body. You know what? The Holy Spirit raised Jesus Christ. He's not a force. He's a person. And you know what? Nobody can raise the dead but God. Amen? Amen. But God and the Holy Spirit raised Jesus Christ. Because He is God. Which means when we saw the Jehovah's, verses, Jehovah's Witnesses. Verses, I can't even get this word properly. The Jehovah's Witnesses versus the Holy Spirit. What we see is, the Bible is truth. And the Jehovah's Witnesses are false. They're antichrist. And they're on the way to eternal lake of fire. But you know what? They are not without hope. They can still have hope. By trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. Who died for the sins of the whole world. Even for the Jehovah's Witnesses. Who shed his blood. Who died on the cross. Was buried. And on the third day. He rose again. Physically and spiritually. And he's coming again. And if people believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the very true God who became man, they shall be saved. Amen. That's the only way to be saved. Shall we pray? Close your eyes and bow your head.